All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to episode three of my Zero to Hero 5M development and Lua tutorial series. Uh, if you're following along from the last tutorial, which hopefully you are, you know that we wrote our very first script and got our spawn handler set up, and we are picking up right where we left off. And in this tutorial, we're going to write a script that allows us to spawn in a new vehicle, um, and obviously drive that vehicle, hopefully. And we're gonna dive in a lot to natives here, and we're gonna get some serious coding going and some serious learning going. So this is really a, a good meaty tutorial. We've kind of covered the basics. We have our server running. We know about manifests and writing scripts now, and now we get to get into the real meat of writing resources. So I'm going to start off by creating a new resource, and I'm just gonna call it ch underscore car. Once again, you can, um, you know, title these whatever you want, and I'll get my manifest file set up. And in this case, we won't need a resource type parameter because this is just a regular old resource or script. So all I'm going to need here is my client scripts. All right, let's dive in. And the first thing we're going to talk about is natives. And natives are um, functions that you call, either uh, 5M functions or functions straight out of GTA, which allow you to affect the world and do things. Um, you're gonna be calling natives all of the time. They are the functions that make the game run. And in the 5M docs, there is a fantastic native reference here with thousands upon thousands upon thousands of natives. Um, fortunately, up at the top, you can filter by server, client, or all. And you can also kind of swap between raw, Lua, C Sharp, and JavaScript, which in this case, we're gonna be focusing on client and Lua. And you'll see there's just a ton of stuff in here. Fortunately, most of them are named something that is um, pretty, pretty sane. So uh, set roads and area sounds like an interesting native. And you know, there's, there's no expectation that you know all of these. The point is that we can search for them. So if I search for vehicle, um, it's going to filter it down to all of the vehicle natives. You know, is vehicle wanted, jet engine on, um, gravity, handbrake, friction overrides. So uh, the native reference is going to be your best friend. And um, the way that we're going to be spawning in a car today is a command. So the goal is that we create a command that is slash car and then the name of a car, like let's say Panto. And when we hit enter, we will hopefully get a car. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to register command, and that's gonna be the register command native. And um, what's great is the native reference has a ton of documentation on how this works. So we can see that register command takes three parameters, the command name, uh, which is gonna be a string, um, the handler, which is gonna be a function, and restricted, which is gonna be a boolean. Restricted isn't going to be relevant to us um, right now. So let's go ahead and write that register command and let's call our, oops, we're gonna call our command car and the second parameter is going to be a function. Now something that's worth calling out here is um, that this function is gonna have two parameters, source and args. And in this case, we're not gonna care about source, but we do care about arguments because everything we write after um, our command is going to be an argument. So let's say foo space bar space baz uh, so foo is going to be argument one, and arguments is a table, and foo is going to be the first item in the table, bar would be the second, and baz would be the third, so on and so forth. So uh, we know that our vehicle name is going to be the argument, so let's just say vehicle name is going to be equal to args one. And um, if you're familiar with, we're gonna do, um, if you're familiar with you know, programming terms, we're going to kind of null coalesce that, right? So if we don't get a vehicle, we're just gonna say use adder as the default vehicle. Once again, I'm following along pretty closely with this uh, tutorial in the 5M documentation. So um, that should be pretty simple to kind of reference this if you need to reference anything. And now the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this is an actual thing, right? If we go in here, we do car, blah, 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 that's just going to break everything because blah, 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 isn't actually a car. So there's going to be two natives we want to use for this. And the first one's not very intuitively named. Um, and that one's going to be called is model in CD image. And this is basically just going to tell us is the name that we're giving it, um, is that an, a model that actually exists in the game? 
So we're going to say if not, and then we're going to call that native is model in CD image, and then we're going to give it the vehicle name. And now another thing that we want to do, because all that's doing is checking if it's a model, right? But obviously we're trying to spawn a vehicle. We are not trying to spawn a prop. So we're also going to want to check and see, you know, is this name that the client gave us, is it actually a vehicle? And um, this is uh, really simple. Is model a vehicle is the native that we're going to call. So once, like I mentioned, um, the natives are oftentimes pretty obviously named, so it's pretty easy to search for them. You'll see there's a lot of options here too. So is it a bicycle, is it a car, is it a jet ski, a plane, a train, an amphibious quad bike? Um, but in our case, all we care about is, is model a vehicle? So we'll say, if not, is model in CD image or not, is model a vehicle? Then, and we're gonna wanna do something here. So what are we gonna do? Let's just uh, trigger a uh, chat message. So we'll trigger an event called chat add message. Oh, whoops, it's not gonna be a function. That's gonna be a table with a field called args and then a table with our message. And we're going to say, uh-oh, you know, vehicle is not a vehicle, right? And so now let's talk about string concatenation, which is basically combining two strings. And the way we do that in Lua is with two dots on either side of our string concatenation. And so then what we can do here is um, concatenate in the actual vehicle names. So now I'll say, uh-oh, whatever they typed in is not a vehicle. And um, let's stop right here and uh, see if this works. Actually, let's do one more thing. Down here, um, oh, and then obviously if it's not a vehicle, we wanna return, we wanna bail out and stop moving forward. And then just real quickly as a throwaway thing here, uh, we'll just, uh, if it is, if everything passes that we checked for, we'll say nice, it is a vehicle. And remember we need to refresh to tell 5M to find our new resource and then start ch underscore car. And let's, um, Go back here and let's do car and then panto. And we got that response back, nice, panto is a vehicle. And if we do car, blah, 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 blah. uh-oh, that's not a vehicle. So perfect, we're on the right track, all of our code works. If something's not working, you can hit F8 and um, you'll see any script errors in here assuming you're running a uh, the beta version of 5M. All right, so let's get rid of this and talk about what we need to do next. Now one thing when we're talking about spawning vehicles or props or things like that that's important to know about game engines in general is that that vehicle probably won't be in memory and ready to go because if we loaded every single vehicle and every single prop in memory, well, we'd run out of memory. So we actually need to tell the game engine, hey, we want this model because we're going to use it. And um, you could probably take a pretty good guess at what the native that we're going to call is going to be and it's gonna be called request model. So if we look that up in the native reference, Request model, request a model to be loaded into memory. So just like that, we can request the model. Now, just because we've requested it doesn't necessarily mean that we'll get it right away. Now, typically this stuff is happening on nanosecond levels, but it could take, you know, in, in, the, in the tiniest definition of time, it could take some time for the model to be loaded. So we wanna wait until the model is loaded. And I bet you can guess pretty quickly, uh, it, that the native we're going to want to use is has model loaded. So, you know, once again, we're kind of showing this trend here of the, the natives are, are pretty, pretty well named. It's pretty easy to find them. If you, if you have an idea for what you're trying to accomplish with a little bit of searching, you can probably find the native you need. So we're going to use a while loop here and say while not has model loaded do, and then we're just going to wait, you know, maybe 10 milliseconds each time. So once this while loop exits, we'll know that our model is ready to go. And the next thing we're going to want to do is move on to spawning the vehicle. So there's a couple things we're gonna, one thing that I'm gonna wanna do, I'm gonna wanna spawn the vehicle where the player is, right? If, if, if I'm at Vinewood Bowl, I certainly don't want my car to show up in Polito, you know? Um, so we need to know where the player is. And now we're gonna get introduced to handles. So everything that exists in the game, um, uh, for example, players, you know, uh, p peds, either an NPC or an actual player, um, vehicles, any props, all have what we call handles or IDs. Um, and that's just going to be a pointer that we can use when calling other functions. So, um, you know, if we want to get the coordinates of something, we're going to need to pass in that handle. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is create a local variable called player pad, and we're gonna get the player's handle. And the native for that is player pad ID. If we look at that in the native reference, uh, returns the current player pad, pretty simple. And now we're going to want to get the location or the coordinates of the player. So, uh, as you can probably guess, the native is gonna be get, well, maybe not easy to guess, but get entity chords. And the reason it's get entity chords is because this native, if you pass in an entity handle, you can get the coordinates of a ped, an NPC, a vehicle, a prop, a lot of different things. So we're going to get the entity chords of player ped, the player ped handle, so just like that. So now position, and if we look at the return value here, uh, this is gonna return a vector three like we discussed in the second episode. And now I think we're ready to create our vehicle. So how do we do that? Uh, you're, you're going to be shocked at the native you use to do this. You would, ne you would never guess that the native to create a vehicle is called create vehicle. <laughs> so uh, before we start writing anything, let's just get an idea of what this method is doing. So it's gonna return vehicle, which is going to be a handle. Um, and then create vehicle, the first parameter is gonna be the model, and then X, Y, and Z coordinates, the heading, and then is network and net, net mission entity. Um, uh, is network is just going to determine if the vehicle exists only for us or for all players. So is this entity networked? You know, is it, is it part of the network sync? Does everyone know about it? Which in this case, we certainly want that too. Um, and I noticed that we need a heading to create our vehicle. So let's, um, you know, let's create it facing the same way that our player is facing. So let's just do a, let's create a new variable here and let's do get entity, I know this is gonna shock you, get entity heading. And uh, if we look at this native, um, you'll see that it just returns a uh, number. All right, so returning to creating a vehicle, let's assign that vehicle handle that we get back to a variable called vehicle. And I'm just gonna break this function call up onto multiple lines just for ease of use. So our model, well, that's vehicle name, and we already know it's valid from the validation we did earlier. And uh, next, we're gonna wanna pass in the coordinates. So there's two ways we could do this. We could do pos.x, you know, pos.y, pos.z. But one thing that's really nice about 5M's implementation of Lua is that in a lot of cases, it'll automatically unpack a vector for you. So in fact, in this case, we can just do pos and it'll automatically unpa unpack that to x, y, and z for us. And then we can move right on to heading, which is that variable we've assigned up here. And then is network is going to be true because we want all the other clients to know about our vehicle as well. All right, so if you think about what we've just done, um, we've created a vehicle smack on top of our player's head, um, which probably isn't what we want. So why don't we um, make sure that the player is in the vehicle? Um, and uh, the native for this is gonna be really simple as well. It's gonna be set ped into vehicle. And if we look here, um, we've got our first parameter is gonna be the, the ped handle, the second one's gonna be the vehicle handle, and the third one's gonna be the seat handle. Now this is something that you just learned with time, but seat indexes, or not seat handle, but seat index. Seat indexes in GTA, negative one is the driver, zero is the front passenger, one, two, three, it moves back, you know, back through the vehicle from there. So if we wanna put them in the driver's seat, we're gonna to wanna to use a seat index of negative one. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll pass in our player pad handle, our vehicle handle that we got from the function before, and then negative one for the seat index. All right, and then one last thing that we're going to want to do is, um, you know, we mentioned that we don't keep all of the models in memory because we would run out of memory, right? So now that we've created this vehicle, we just wanna let the game know that um, it can clean this up whenever it's ready. So we'll call set model as no longer needed. Once again, pretty simple naming, and we'll pass in the vehicle name. And that just lets the game engine know, hey, when it's no longer relevant to have this model in memory, so you know, maybe once the player's nowhere near this vehicle anymore or it's destroyed, you can go ahead and clean that up out of memory. Let's be, let's be good citizens of um, you know, our clients and make sure that we're cleaning things up as we go. That's it, we're, we're done. We should be able to spawn a car now. Um, so if we go ahead in here and restart our resource using restart and then ch car, let's go to the game and see if it works. So I'm gonna do slash car and panto. Let's see if we get me a panto and look at that. I am in the driver's seat of a panto.
and you know maybe let's try something a little bit more fun like an Itali GTV. Nice, look at that. And because uh, aircraft and boats are technically vehicles as well, if I get to a safe spot over here, I should be able to get myself maybe a Havoc. Look at that. All right, so we have learned a ton in this episode so far, uh, and we've really got to kind of the meat of 5M development. And as you can see from this very simple script, what you're going to be doing 99% of the time is calling natives and learning about natives and putting them into practice. So hopefully that's what you've learned in this episode is a little bit about how native works, how to put them into practice, how to think about them, and of course, where to find them. Uh, I've got a little bit of homework for this episode as well. Uh, if you want to do something a little bit more interesting um, and a little bit more challenging, go ahead and take this concept and see if you can apply it to guns or weapons. See if you can create a command called slash weapon that gives the um, player a weapon. And I'll leave that up to your imagination how you accomplish that. Um, obviously, you're going to want to do a lot of searching of the natives. Uh, and you're also going to need to learn a little bit about how weapons are named in GTA. So that's a really good kind of piece of homework to take the same rough idea of what you've got here and apply it to something else. Uh, my Discord is linked down in the description. If you try that out, be sure to drop into the Discord. Tell me how it went. Tell me what you learned. And if you want to leave a comment down below as well, let me know what you're excited about creating first in 5M development. You know, ever I feel like everyone has something that piques their interest and they want to learn how to do it, right? Um, and so that's what I find really exciting about getting through tutorials is as I, as I go through a tutorial learning something new, I finally start to get to that point where I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and feel, you know, that thing that I initially set out to accomplish that I really wanted to learn about, I feel like I'm empowered enough to try my, you know, my first attempt's always going to be awful, but I feel like I can try it now without being completely blind. So let me know down in the comments, you know, what are you excited to build for yourself and how close do you think you are to being ready to give it your first awful, terrible, but honest attempt? And with that, the episode's over. The next episode, we're going to be talking about uh, server-side scripts and talking between the client and the server. So definitely, if you enjoyed the episode, hit like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified uh, when the next episode comes out. As I mentioned, we've got a Discord with the Scripting Help channel. Be sure to join that if you need any help. Just want to share your successes, your struggles, anything like that. We're working on growing that community, making it a great place for developers to learn and build each other up. So thank you very much for joining us. My name is Charles Hacks, and I will see you in the next episode.